Flopsy and the Easter Bunny Olympics, part 36 of 40. How you doing, Bustle? I whispered to my friend as Sidrinum brought us to a stop in front of our 200 meter steeplechase games leader. Looking forward to this race, she whispered back. Two laps will practically be an all out sprint compared to round one. This should be fun. For sure, I said, adding, just beware of falling bunnies, remembering my just completed conversation with Mysteria. Huh? Tell you later, I said, as Sidrinum introduced us to our 200 meter steeplechase bunny games race official. All right, you fourth round rabbit, Sidrinum announced from his position next to a small but muscular brown bunny. It is with great pleasure that I present you with Egbrillo, a steeplechaser extraordinaire, before leading us in a bit of paw-stomping applause. That was years ago, Egbrillo said, smiling and nodding. But thank you all. I hope you're all excited. I hope you'll all do your best. And I hope you'll all be careful. Don't think for a second that just because your final steeplechase is only 200 meters that it's any less difficult or less dangerous than your previous three, at least for you. I know two laps sounds as though it should be easier than eight or six, but bear in mind that you've been out here working hard for well over 90 minutes and you're tired. So push hard, but race smart. As this is your fourth steeplechase, I'll cut right to it. The chase, that is. You know how the color course is set up with two sets of alternating over, under, around, and through color-coded obstacles. You know you need to complete two laps. You know the rules concerning time penalties should you forget to navigate one or more of your lovely obstacles. You know to avoid contact with one another and to demonstrate proper sports bunnyship throughout. And you know that this is your time to climb. <laughs> er, shine, he added with a wink. So, without further punishment, Egbrillo paused and wiggled his ears, let's get to it and see you through it. This way to your final steeplechase, my lovely little fluffle. Over, under, around, and through, here we come before trotting us to the race course. Calling out one name after another as Egbrillo lined us up in our time trial start queue, he positioned us from 1 to 52. I counted the names as he positioned us, and I worked hard not to smile as Woundwort was placed 13th in line. My desire to smile was primarily prompted by Woundwort again receiving that most fitting of badges, number 13. If anybody had demonstrated poor sports bunnyship over and over in the last three rounds of competition, it was Woundwort, and I hope my suppressed smile was prompted more by the irony of him placing in the 25th percentile in our previous performance than by pettiness on my part concerning his 13th place start. Walking by bustle, I whispered, good luck, as she was placed 40th. Continuing with my bunny count, I let out a sigh of relief when I was lined up 48th and then gave Pax a nod of approval when he took the 51st or second to last spot in front of a bunny whose name I didn't know. Once we'd all been lined up in proper order, Egbrillo declared, Remember your three G's, good sports bunnyship, good luck, and good racing, before trotting off to his place overlooking the track. With our fluffle reduced to well under half our first round size, combined with our lineup approximating what represented the slowest to quickest, I kept my eye on the start line in order to try to gauge how many bunnies would manage to complete a lap while I waited anxiously through my eight minutes before I started racing. As the bunny would start, each received shouts of encouragement from nearby racers and bunny games officials. When our 13th bunny re was released, it sounded as though shouts for wound work were voiced by fewer bunnies than had shouted encouragement for the 12 we'd started before him. But even as I thought this, I brushed it out of my mind as being petty, inaccurate due to my being positioned so far away, and mostly irrelevant. I was here to become an Easter bunny. I needed to focus my energies towards achieving that goal, not worrying about how many bunnies were rooting for my self-appointed enemy. With nearly every bunny already on the track, I'd lost count of how many had completed one lap versus two, but at least a dozen had finished their second lap before I began my race. The three bunnies who remained in queue along with race officials hollered encouragement as I took off sprinting, but Pax's shout of, Good luck! Go Flopsy! were the loudest and most distinct. I sprinted hard and fast, absolutely determined to do my best. As expected, the second shortest course presented us with the second most difficult set of obstacles, but likewise, the queue lines were again non-existent. I raced, passing a dozen buddies who were showing signs of fatigue as they struggled to finish their second lap as I sped through my first. 
Feeling strong, feeling determined, and motivated by a bit of pettiness, I looked for wound work from atop the first blue over obstacle I encountered. Not spying him from on high, I tried again from the top of the second, and it was there I caught a glimpse of what I thought was him rounding his final curve and heading towards the through red obstacle. Glancing just ahead, I saw what looked like Bustle finishing her race, and I hoped she'd had fun. Happy for my friend and determined to stay ahead of Pax, I raced on. When I reached the same obstacle on my second lap that I watched Wound Ward exit nine obstacles earlier, I heard the labored breathing and familiar pawfall of Pax coming on strong. Come on, I sub-vocalized, not sure if I was encouraging Pax, me, or both of us as I sprinted to our finish, my tail crossing line just ahead of the nose of my favorite friendly rival, exultant in my performance and rejoicing in the ecstasy of heated, friendly, all-out effort.